Welcome to our homestead. Uh, behind us is the cabin that my husband Christer, right here, I'm Amanda, my son Kai, our dog Frankie. Behind us is the cabin we live in off the grid. Been living here since he was about two months old, but my husband grew up here. So the house has a lot of history and sentimental value for us. And I guess we're just gonna walk you around really quick and show you how we make things work. So this is our garden and it, it by no means is uh, the source of our food, but it is, it is, it's like a hobby, like everybody else, right? We've got the fall rains right now and we've got nothing. My lettuce all went to seed before it got big and my peas are just starting to blossom now. So <laughs> not very hopeful for this stuff, but it is fun and my potatoes are doing great. So we'll have a good potato and oven onion harvest. So that's fun. We try to you know, grow as much produce as we can with a two-year-old around picking seedlings and things, but uh, really we usually end up hiking into the grocery store. The hike is, uh, takes me two hours and maybe a little bit more now that I've got a bun growing. And we always, you know, we, when we go in, we have to carry Kai and it's kind of arduous because even when we get to the truck at the trailhead, it's another two hours to the grocery store. So round trip is eight hours before we even walk into the store. So it takes, it's, uh, everything's a mission. Everything is a mission. Everything's an adventure, everything's a mission. We try to be really prepared. It's not like if you're missing an ingredient, you can run out to the store and get it. You just have to improvise. Uh, all of our meals are cooked here by moi. <laughs> Except for what we order out and yeah. have delivered. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so we haul in all of our non-perishable stuff. We'll get to that actually when we get to the little cabin. The, the garden is fun. And actually I've been studying up on weeds that you can eat, edible weeds. We've got a lot of those. So a lot of chickweed and wild dock and fiddlehead ferns. You can eat fireweed. We've got a lot of stuff that just, actually all the wild stuff grew much better than my garden this year. So we're pretty responsible. We try to be pretty responsible. We don't burn plastic uh, or chemical things, but we do all of our paper and our brush. We do a big bonfire probably once a month uh, where we burn our paper um, and yard waste, things like that. And then you can see we have our, just our little non-bear proof, non-mouse proof, but it totally works for us, garbage. There's no food in there because we do compost all of our food and water waste. So it's just mostly packaging that we can't burn. Plastic. Plastic. What, what do you do with your plastic? Can I hike we, it out, yeah. yeah. Hike it out, <laughs> carry yeah. it out. It's like camp, camping, right? Responsible camping, pack it in, pack it out. I carried a lot of poopy <laughs> diapers. <laughs> <laughs> that we we could have burned and I did not so I get responsibility kudos yeah that is true yeah you know we we ta talked about doing the cloth diapers but with no running water it, it became just way too I'll not feasible to do here. so we'll just walk back here you can see my my laundry line is hung out here so that's the dryer so the rainy days are great because we get water to do the laundry <laughs> but then it's not a great day to dry the laundry, so we had to have a... Well, and you have to wait for the sun for the solar power. <laughs> yeah, wait for the sun for yeah. the solar. So, so you get a rainy day, catch your water, then the next sunny day you'll do the laundry and hang it up. It takes a little bit of planning. Luckily, we'd only do about a load a week, and we have a high capacity washing machine. That was one of my things when we moved out here. It's like, yeah, we need one of those. Even though we don't have the running water, we hook it up inside with the intake hose, the discharge hose. We by hand carry buckets out of the house. Uh, totally worth it. Doing laundry by hand is not something that anybody wants to do. Woodshed, do you want to say anything about, it, about that while we walk by? I don't know what to say about the woodshed except that it <laughs> needs to be bigger, right? Like Always. <clears throat> yeah. Christopher's mom actually cooked on that as when he was a kid. She cooked in that. In so that. She used the oven. I remember, oh, yeah. I remember cool. she used to cook it in the summertime. You get your and fire going and this would be, we took it, it's been falling apart. Yeah. So in she, the rain. she would bake in the morning and you'd have to like start the stove early so that um, the house doesn't get too hot, but it would still get like hot enough. So you'd have to prop the door open and then you'd have to put a mosquito net over the door because you don't want a bunch of bugs coming in. But obviously there's not a thermostat on there. So you're like trying to pick the right pieces of wood. And um, I remember thinking that my mom was not a particularly good cook. I'm going back <laughs> and then I had a, this realization that she like <laughs> the raw materials were at fault. I'm gonna take you. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you to Uncle Khan. and I'll be right back. Okay. You guys walk past the bench and stuff, and I'll be, um, be back. Getting rid of the stove is a hard one for me, or up upgrading the stove. 
that thing just feels right, you know? Feels like the house should have an old school cook stove. So we took the top off of this thing. Um, you know, it had the old school top with the burners. It's, it's actually a desk. It's that desk that's covered in food in there. The pantry desk um, is the top of the old cook stove. So we pulled that off to kind of have that little remembrance of it, I guess. It's time to let it go. It's like, it's, it's definitely a hazard for... For many reasons. I mean, it, it didn't, it heated the house okay but it would back up and with the little kids in the house, I don't want there to be a lot of smoke. That one we have now is so much more efficient. You know, a couple pieces of wood, you're good to go. This you'd have to soak in the night, like waking up to stoke the stove or waking up and having the house be super cold in the morning. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the, the stove that we have now will run all night long. We've had that thing awesome. going for over 24 hours. It'll just last. It's, it is awesome. That stove is amazing. I re so the specs on the stove is that if you fill the firebox, it'll, it'll burn for 30 hours. And I remember reading through that and I was like, No way. My ass, it's going to burn for 30 hours. But if it burns for half of that, that'd be friggin' sweet. As long I, as it gets us through the night. I think that thing will burn for 48 hours. Yeah. Like if you really stoke that up and turn it way down, it's the crazy. The new wood stoves are awesome. Yeah. So we got the little Blaze Princess. The Blaze King Princess. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and it's, it's awesome. so oversized for the how big our house is. But our house is pretty drafty. So I think it, it's suitable. I talked Perfect. to the, the, the stove guy and he's like, I described the house. He's, he's like 600 square feet. You don't want that stove. That stove's way too big. I'm like, I don't think it is. He's like, <laughs> well, do you have a lot of windows and is your house super drafty? I was like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, all right, maybe that's the right stove. Um, so as we've been plugging up the holes, it's becoming you know, warmer. warmer. Yep. So that the big house uh, took about nine months to build. This little cabin was where Rick lived while he was building the big house. Um, basically, he got dropped down. Uh, I, I think here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, he he'd come and he'd stake the land, so he knew where he was going. And then he like recruited a bunch of buddies. And again, these guys were you know 28 years old or something, which is fun to think about, right? It's just a, it was just a bunch of kids really. Um, and then they they got helicopter dropped out here and had this five day like you Sprint. know 15 hours a day or whatever and built this cabin and so this is where he lived when he was uh building the big house and now it's turned into storage yeah it's our food storage so yeah. we don't have refrigeration and um there are bears out here so we don't like to keep too much in the house especially if, if we're gone for more than i don't know two weeks or so we try to get most anything that smells and just get it away from the house pots and pans and stuff you know i rebuilt this little cabin <clears throat> last summer i was all fired up about it it's like you know the, it had been falling into the ground and just kind of looking like it was over it was rotting into the ground yeah I mean, so it was it was basically wood sitting on the ground which kept it really cold because the permafrost you know and, and the, the the it wasn't a sod roof but it was just tar paper so there were you know a lot of seedlings Moss. and things growing up yeah. there so it's it was really super pretty. insulated uh doesn't get nearly as cold as it used to it doesn't stay nearly as cold. But it's, it's just kind of a bummer to rebuild it and then have to put plywood back over the windows for the bears. Just feels like I built this pretty thing and now it looks derelict again. So yeah, we did a restoration project. So all the timbers are the original. You can tell these are peeled logs instead of um, the skinned logs, not peeled logs. Um, and it's fun to think that these are the logs that Rick was working with like back in the 80s. So yeah, so we, in the spring, the late, late spring on the last crust of snow, we haul in all of our um, non-perishable goods. So we have mostly pasta, rice, cans of goods that we keep in here. And then we have two uh, coolers, one for dairy and meat, which, you know, really you gotta eat within the first three days out here. Um, yogurt actually lasts forever though, cottage cheese and sour cream, anything cultured, it's great. And then we also have our produce bin and things like cabbage, carrots, potatoes, onions, that lasts forever. But anything like berries that we want to bring, any special treats have to get eaten within the first day. Yeah, so. the, the food thing is a whole process. I'm not really oh sure how God, to explain it. Oh my God, the food it, thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, could, I could write a book about how to you know, make your food last longer, what the order that you should eat things in, and I could make a menu out of, what can you make out of just canned goods, <laughs> you know? stuff like yeah you know, we I, I do wish we ate better but I think we're actually doing pretty well yeah. do you ever think about actually doing that like a book like an ebook or um, something I'm real busy right now <laughs> but yeah once all the projects are done all the building um, 
Yeah, so the building projects, Christopher's awesome. He's fast, he peels the logs, get everything notched and put together. And then I usually come through and um, there's this uh, permachinking, which is a great product. It's a lifeline product, but it um, takes a long time for me to put it in. Um, and we've had squirrels that have actually gotten through the little, they could, those rodents, I swear they can fit through anything. And once they get in here, we have one metal big garbage can in there, but everything else is just Rubbermaid and they've eaten through thick, thick plastic. We've had so many problems with squirrels getting in and they've eaten through the wood even, um, but they don't eat this stuff. It's like a latex type of, yeah. some kind of medium in it too, that makes it thicker, but it's awesome. So. Yeah, on the house it's like weatherproofing, but for here it's just you know, proof. road improving. It works. Um, well. Yeah, it works great. When I get the time, I, I haven't. I've gotten the big holes, but I haven't gotten through and gotten everything on there yet. But um, so that's where we keep everything: storage, long-term storage, and food stuff. Dream projects. We've got. Um, we're gonna put a little carport off the side so that we can keep our snow machine mm. and carport. tool tool shed tool shed. So that will free up space in our woodshed too. So we've got. Some vision for the place to there's a lot work. There's it's a still lot. happening yeah yeah <laughs> with him working full-time and me full-time momming um things are slow it's a snail's pace i keep thinking gosh if i had my mom come out or aunties come out for a month i could get so much done uh yeah. but we get about two hours of work done a day like homestead work done we've got the snow machine over there underneath the tarp um, <clears throat> usually, uh, historically, we had dogs, so there's, um, you can see a little, this is actually a dog spot, there's there's probably half a dozen chains. Dog hookups. Dog hookups out here. So we haven't had dogs for the last two and a half years. I, I miss them, uh, but the snow machine is way faster, um, and you can haul way more. So this is just a, a big ass, it's, it's like 10 feet long um, with no back so I can haul building logs. The, that's what the stove came in on. That's what the washing machine came in on. Yep. Um, yeah, Every, basically everything that's big comes out in the winter on the snow. And because if it doesn't, we have to carry it in on, on that, you know, two hour hike and on your back. I mean, Christopher's carried 80 pound packs through a bog. It's, it's grueling. Yeah. But once everything's out here, you kind of forget about that. You're like, oh, sweet. We've got a new window. We've got, you know, beautiful stained glass window out of our guest house. I love it. And I don't know. It's not really worth uh, going down there. It's just a trail that dead ends into a pit of uh, compost. But we, that's, you know, we have to hike all of our drain gray water, like cook it, in, you know, drain your pasta or your food scraps or, you know, you brush your teeth and spit into a bucket. All of that gets carried down and dumped far from the house so it doesn't attract animals. Um, and you'd actually think, I've been surprised, like, mice get into it, but there's nothing big that's ever really yeah. been down there eating. I've never seen bears down there. But... In the winter, it's fun to see the tracks, to see who's come to, to feed. Yeah. But uh, we, you know, we eat a lot of vegetarian stuff, so there's not a lot of meat scraps going in there. So it really is like carrot peels. Future site of our carport. Yes. And actually the old site of the little cabin. Yeah, so basically these these old, um, I, I don't know what you call them. Foundation the foundation logs. raft logs or whatever. This was the, this, the original foundation for the little cabin. So they, you can see the back here, it's kind of just starting to rot out. This hole in the ground, if you can kind of tell, um, was where the old little cabin was. It was rotting down. I was going to rebuild it, so I tore it down and was going to rebuild it in the same spot, but I started to dig uh, holes for the foundation, the sauna tubes, you know, the foundation pilings, and ended up running into like immovable giant rocks. So I just took the whole thing and moved it over. And then we had the brainstorm that we should just have another, like a, a gabled roof, so another roof that comes off the back of this thing. And that's where I'll park the snow machine and I'll put a bunch of lawn Tools stuff. and, and building supplies. Yeah, so that, you know, the whole, this whole place has been just this huge work in progress for the last three years. And like I said, Rick, Rick came out here 35 years ago. I, what he did is amazing, blows my mind every time. And then, and then I, I think he sat on his thumb for 35 years and just let everything rot <laughs> and like stapled visqueen over the holes. It just like didn't deal. Well, he is busy doing other stuff. Yeah, so we <laughs> He had you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so we've been dealing. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really excited about this. Yeah. Uh, this would be cool. So this is uh, concrete? concrete for the pilings. Um, so that's one of the that's one of the new and improved features. So, yeah. Uh, next spring's projects, and we've got all of our logs and 
200 years from now, when they find this site, there's just going to be like two dozen of these little cement pilings <laughs> sticking <laughs> up all over the place. Um, but it's awesome to have the house be up and like this will never rot out now. So it's like I just, Kai's going to have nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, what he's just, do. what's that kid going to do? Just like, have fun. <laughs> Might actually just stay here and hang out. What a concept. So we've got, uh, there's three solar panels back there. Um, four solar panels, one of them smaller. But so we have about 750 watts of solar, I think. 770 watts of solar, something like that. Um, which is a ton for what we need. Um, or at least it's a ton for what we need until winter hits and then... Then the no amount the, helps. Yeah, exactly. So we, we, we go from having this enormous surplus uh, to having not nearly enough in the space of like a month Weeks. or yeah it's, yeah. it's crazy because you get you've got 24 hours worth of light and then you've got almost 24 hours worth of darkness in the space of six months that that equinox period when things are changing the fastest you lose like i i, I want to say a day. there's a month like september you lose like two hours or something i forget what the number is but so the panels are rad most of the time like it's probably eight months a year then there's that four we're months just a year. throwing away power i wish there was a way better battery Capacity. Yeah, if I could store all that, like I have enough on an annual basis. If I had the most, the biggest battery bank in the whole world, I'd be set. Yeah. Right? Like, totally set. And then that's the satellite dish is a necessary eyesore. Kind of bums me out. Um, but uh, the, it does it does what it needs to do. So that's how I work. Keeps us connected. Satellite yeah. for the internet, yes. Yeah. Um, so it's, um, yeah, like you said, that's how, that's how I work. But every year, <coughs> this is just like, Full of firewood. Every so spring we haul in all of our firewood and building wood. Yeah. So this is you'll see like piving. We get it piled high, and then it's the whole summer of processing, chopping, and um, stacking, and. And that's so. to save the trees out here. Like you don't want to cut any trees down here. Or? I'm I'm warming to the idea. So basically, I have. It's hard for me. It's this weird balance of feeling like. I, I want to have as little impact as possible, and I feel like if I get, you know, if I take one tree per acre, then then the forest will never know, right? Um, well, for building logs, we try to get the dead standing spruce trees. Uh, they're drier, they're lighter, they're easier to move, and it's better. If, you know, we've got a spruce spruce beetle infestation up here that has been killing off our our spruce trees. Um, we actually had to cut down one of my favorite huge, huge old growth trees because spruce beetles but those make the best building logs yeah uh, so we get those so we go around and specifically choose those spruce trees for building yeah. and then the birch trees we try to get the ones with the busted off tops because they're gonna rot out and die anyway yeah so it, so there's there's some of that so you uh, there's not enough compromised trees here there, there probably is on the on the property if I looked at the entirety of the property and, and tried to pick them off but um, I I don't you know it's weird we've been there's so people have been harvesting trees out here for almost 40 years and you'd think that there would be just like stumps everywhere but it's not like you can tell as you're getting to to our neck of the woods so to speak that there are suddenly just stumps everywhere and i think that part of that is that we do range more widely probably than we need to to, to yeah to get the trees but um i've been starting to feel like they're the view I, has yeah, been compromised the view's been compromised right so <laughs> trees if I, have grown in the last 30 years if i started taking the trees here then the view would be better and I got to take a tree from somewhere. So maybe I should, I don't know. But anyway, basically yeah. in the springtime, the springtime is a whole flurry of activity and getting in firewood is one of the big things. So, but this is, this is the old porch. So I, you know, ripped down the old porch to build this new porch. Um, and then these are all the sort of dead porch logs, which I'll throw the ones that are truly rotten and compromised on the bonfire. And then I'll cu cut up the rest of them and we'll burn them, which kind of feels a little cannibalistic. It's sort of exciting to burn the house. <laughs> This is sort of iconic, right? So we've got both of these logs, which is where I set up the building logs um, to peel them. Cause you gotta, you know, the log comes in looking like a log with bark and whatever, the and then gets, yeah, the tree comes in looking like a tree. Then you've got to process it and peel it to make it look like that. Um, so I've got this peeling station set up and a bunch of log peels. Um, and then the dog pulled in a, a moose leg. Oh yeah, you can't see that probably. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the moose bone while well, the dog sits here and watches me do my thing. So I, it's just, this is like where I spent my summer. Well, it's, <laughs> it, it's all actually, it works great because yeah, you have the, the extra firewood, but the log shavings make perfect kindling. Uh, so we try to pick those up before it rains and uh, use, use what we can. Sad, we had all those sled dogs in it. 
it's a whole culture that has had to shift. The dogs used to eat the scraps, so we didn't have to hike that bucket out so far. I mean, the dump bucket used to be the dog food bucket. It really did. Um, Frankie's a little more picky of an eater, and he can't handle all that. Um, but yeah, and just the culture of like walking out the door. I mean, there's a, a year and a half we didn't have a dog, and it's weird being like you walk out the door. Maybe there's a bear or a moose. You wouldn't know it. Um, so we saw our alarm dog. I was standing right here. It was probably two weeks ago, so there was, it was still light. It was 11 o'clock. It was just getting dusky. And the dog comes up and just gets super excited. He, he, you can just tell he's on full alert, right? And I can't really it figure out why. On. So I'm just looking out. It looks like the forest. We're just hanging out. And then he goes racing down towards the spring, probably you know 20 yards. And then there's this giant bull moose that just comes standing up out of the yard that was literally, it was like the 25 so feet tall. away. Yeah, it's just sleeping there. He's this huge rack. And, and it's like, it just, it was like a cartoon moment just to see him like rise up on all four legs all at once a that it's real that there's you know that there Stop. are moose there are bear and they're not that far away and then b that just you don't like it's closer than you think yeah you know it's right well, here. it's funny so the hike out is far people don't just show up here like they come with a purpose and we know they're coming and we usually have to hike out and get them because the trail is almost indistinguishable from a game trail i was here alone with kai you were somewhere getting dripped on. Um, and I was in the kitchen cooking and doing dishes and he was playing by himself. And all of a sudden Kai comes running up. He says, mom, who's that big guy in the yard? I, and I, I mean, I'm kind of like, what? And it's like, mom, grabs my hand, and pulls me over the window. Look at that big guy in the yard. It's a moose. You know, I was like, oh, it's a moose, honey. It's okay. But it is one of those reminders of, yeah, just random things will walk through the yard. And it's really those moments where you're like, oh, and it balances out the hard stuff. It makes it feel like, oh, that's right. That's why we're out here. This is cool. We do water catchment, which is not drinking water, but it's uh, laundry water. water and wash water. So when we're taking saunas, um, that's the water we use to bathe. And sometimes dish water, yeah, that sort of thing. I was going to say dishes, laundry, and body washing water. Yeah. Um, and, you know, cleaning up um, from drinking and doing stuff like that. Utility water. Um, so the, we do have a spring that's um, that's probably 50 yards, 100 yards down, down the hill. Um, so that's that's where all the drinking water comes in. I carry it up by hand. Um, it's funny. Uh, we were in San Diego before we lived here, and it was like this huge drought. This place is a, I, I think, it's still classified as a boreal rainforest. It's just soaked. There's water everywhere. And we go through, I know exactly how much water we go through because I pull it up by hand. <laughs> and I pull up two five gallon buckets and that lasts us for two or three days. The three of us, when we're when we're bathing in there, go through, I think about six gallons. Mm -hmm. So it's about two gallons to, per person to yeah. bathe. Um, and it's, it's just ironic to me because coming from San Diego where everybody's worried about the water and it's a big drought and whatever, I'm sure we were using you know, 10 times, 20 times that much water. Yeah, we could use a lot more, but it, we use what we want and whatever. Yeah, um, so this, this is a, total mess like the whole you know it's a homestead so it's everything's kind of a work in progress um but uh when i pulled down the old porch that was the porch was also sort of the catch -all. Tool, tool shed catch-all place so now all that crap is piled up right here i'm trying not to put it back there but i need a place to put it yeah so i'm gonna build that <laughs> so i'm gonna build that carport thing and then and then, then it'll we'll really be cleaned up that will be cleaned up for sure uh, just comes off the roof no no gutter system or anything. It, it rains so hard, the roof gets cleaned off. Um, and we we never go through this much water. It grows algae before we can get through it all. Sauna is awesome. The sauna, <laughs> the bathhouse. The bath the bathhouse. Is, yeah, that probably is a better term for it. That's the old stove that actually used to be in there before we rebuilt it. It's now a planter. Yeah, so <clears throat> there's been a bunch of building projects in the last two years. This this was not, not was it the year before? I forget. Anyway, a year or two Kyle ago. I was six months old, so it was two years ago. Yeah, we, we re rebuilt the sauna. So this is, uh, we fired up pretty much every other day um, and uh, sit in there and get sweaty and get hot. And then um, when you're ready to go in, just basically take a Navy shower, dump water over your head, soap up, rinse off. Um, and it's great. I mean, it feels to me, it feels like you're getting cleaner than you do in a shower because you're all the, sweating, it out. sweating it out, right? Um, Kai loves it. It's funny, when he was a kid, he didn't really like baths, but he loved the sauna. He just sits there, plays with his toys. Here we're inside our sauna. Christian and his brother built this, uh, and it actually took a little work, 
because we had to design the floor to drain, but keep it up off the ground. And uh, we had a couple of just, just construction. Pretty high tech engineering. That's good, <laughs> high, high tech. <laughs> well, how yeah. did you figure it out? Like what, what happened? Um, so there was, there's all these happy accidents that, so the old sauna, the reason that we had to rebuild it, uh, there was a couple of different reasons, but one of the reasons was my dad's building style was to build everything on the ground. So the old sauna logs were literally positioned on the ground. And, and what would happen is, again, you're taking this Navy shower where you're, you're rinsing, soaping, rinsing again, and then all the water just goes on the floor. And I was like, well, when I, when I pull this up, I don't, I don't want the logs to rot out. Um, and I don't want it to get icy and like not drain and I'm not really sure exactly what to do. So basically the floor, when we laid the floor out, um, it, it intentionally bows in the middle and also drains to the back. Um, so, and, and <clears throat> my real like stroke of genius was there's pressure treated uh, two by eights that run. So I don't know if you can see, but, but basically there's a perimeter here of pressure treated wood. So the water runs to the back and then there's about an inch lip up here and it, it just pulls up and drains out and it's actually worked great. So I, the pressure treated wood will probably last forever, but even if it doesn't, I can pull it off and replace it and I can, I, I can replace these boards. So I, I fully expect that in the next 10 or 20 years, I'll have to rip up the plywood Just in the here. floor though, it's just so much easier than rebuilding the whole structure. Yeah. So we've got our wood stove. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes or so to get it cooking. Depends um, on what time of year it is. Yeah, um, but there's our, our hot water gets, we put our water in there just like that, heat it up. Uh, we've got our rainwater in a six gallon bucket there and we just mix the temperature that we want. Um, Kai has his little bath right here. Um, and you know, we've been doing it family style, which means we, I'm pregnant, I can't get in a hot, hot sauna. So we've been only running it like 110, 120 is good for me. But back in the day, man. We, we've had this place cooking. I like to- Soaked to, it up and sit and just uh, so wet. No, numbers that I will tell you that make no sense. So that's that's the sauna thermometer and we've had it at 230, which doesn't, it does, seems like impossible, right? Like, like water, the water should be boiling, right? <laughs> like, um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the other part of the sauna is you sit in here, get super hot, and then um, in the summertime, dump rainwater on your head. In the wintertime, though, you can literally like go Definitely. snow swimming, mm -hmm. which is that'll take your breath away. Do that a couple times, and it's man, it feels it feels. You feel squeaky clean. Literally, your skin squeaks. Well, you, you also pores feel so tight. This natural empty. high of like you go back in, you're just like, whoa, I'm zonked, but in a good way. So everything yeah. seems really pleasant. And uh, one of the big new features of this on is, is my two windows looking out north so you can sit here and look at the mountains while you're cooking. Not just yeah. any mountains, Denali. Yeah, yeah, yeah looking oh, at yeah. the Alaska range. So so Denali is fairly prominent. I cut out the branches of this tree so it's just framed and sweet. Kick it, get, get too hot, look at the mountain, swim in the snow, repeat, and then you're clean. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this is the guest house. Um, the idea was uh, that little cabin that, that we looked at earlier, um, we were going to just rebuild, it. rebuild the little cabin and we could kind of started to get carried away. And Got excited. The, so the little cabin, when, when we were kids, we used to turn it into a fort, but of course it's full of crap. So you would sort of like move all the crap to one side and then it would, you know, put a little bed in there or whatever. But I remember being like eight and 10 and there's the shotgun that's hanging over the door in the big house. We took our 22s out, put it over the door. We like got our own five gallon buckets and started getting water from the spring. It was like, this is gonna be our house. Um, so I wanted to, it's nice to have a guest house when people come out here, like you guys. Um, so we we're, were like, okay, well, we're gonna rebuild the little cabin, but we're gonna do a little bit better and maybe put a loft up so you can have like a place to stay. And then we just kind of started getting carried away. And now this place is way too pretty to store it's stuff in. way too pretty. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we got the we got a stained glass window <laughs> <laughs> that you had to hike out, hike right? out on my back, man. The, that that lead. Dude, that thing came along. That thing came from Indiana, like special. It's so <laughs> funny. So we did a big sailing trip before we came to live here in the woods, and uh, we were looking online, and I saw this, and I loved it. I, I loved it. It's this uh, sailboat, stained glass window. It's beautiful. It throws rainbows everywhere. And, and Christian's grandmother, Rick's mom. Why would you have a sailboat way out in the woods? And so I was like, what? Then I was like, because we went sailing, Grandma. She's like, oh, that's wonderful. That's perfect. <laughs> so that's our little uh, reminder. You know, the woods and the sea are just big, big places we want to be. 
Uh, we do have two auxiliary beds. Our strawberry bed has been overtaken by wild raspberries, ironically. Um, but we have our rhubarb and we've got, um, I'm actually trying to plant cultivated big raspberries. So those are starting to take off. So this is such an improvement over what used to be. I think of this place is super fancy. I had a buddy that came out um, last summer. He was like, as, as he was sort of doing the postmortem, we were walking back out. I was like, so what is, you know, how did that compare to what you were imagining? He's like, you know, it, it actually was like a little bit less rustic. Like you told me it was super rustic. It wasn't that rustic, but the outhouse, that's rustic, dude. That place is rough. <laughs> I remember feeling like this is this, this is the is, new fancy outhouse, bro. What are you talking about, man? Like this is the good outhouse. Yeah, the old outhouse the dogs usually used to actually get into, and like it would leak. It was just disgusting. So now we've got our our toilet that our separating toilet seat. Yeah, we've got a urine separating toilet seat. So that's so, awesome. Yeah, um, you. Th this is the shit bucket, um, which we empty periodically we um, tried super hard to find somebody who would pump it like an rv place like if we hauled it out in the winter would you pump this and it was like no we tried to bring it to sanitation they're like no nobody wants our shit. yeah um so it kind of you know we do what we have to do out here um uh, being as responsible as you can be but anyway the, so yeah so now it's a bucket of crap and not a bucket of piss and crap yeah <laughs> so. which helps in the winter when you empty it you know just well, it helps in the summer, so it doesn't fill up, so you have to empty it. I never thought it would work for ladies, but it actually does. Every works every time. Yep. Um, you just have to in the winter. You have to remember to empty that little pee catchment can, otherwise it freezes. Uh, we do burn. We burn our toilet paper, so really that is. It actually takes a long time to fill one of those for us. Um, two a year, good. Yeah. So in the spring, along with the hauling, that's another one of those jobs. Spring gets really busy around here, mm -hmm. um, between hauling the firewood, the building logs, the provisioning. You also have to remember, oh yeah, take your shit out. Yeah, dude, if you're ever up here in the spring, you should check it out. That, yeah. That's like totally different and really fun. Every season out here is completely different. It's, uh, you wouldn't even recognize it, honestly. So in the winter, the walk, this, all these alders will branch over and you have like a little snow tunnel. It's super, super oh, cool. It's like magical when you get that um, flocking mm -hmm. on the trees, it's so pretty. 